Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, I'm finally going to get around to doing a blog which has been on my list for almost since the start of this blog. Every week, probably, on average, I get an email from someone saying, Dave, can you do a blog on PIC versus AVR, PIC microchip versus Atmel? You know, I get these emails from beginners wanting to know which one they should be using, which is the best, and, uh, you know, have I got any advice for them? Well, okay, here's my blog on PIC versus Atmel. Now, at first I thought it was a really good idea for a blog. It'd be terrific. You know, I could go through all the technical details of the architectures and the, and the tools and, the, you know, the feature set and price and everything and, you know, come to a conclusion as to which one, you know, um, which is best for beginners or which is best for somebody else. And, well, the more I think about it, the more I realise I just cannot do a technical blog on it. I just like a full on all the technical details comparing um, AVR to PIC. It's just, it's, I, the more I think about it, the more I think it's just totally and utterly pointless. Because I know if I do it, I'm going to, it doesn't matter what I say, what conclusions I come to, there'll be rabid fanboys of each microcontrollers, but particularly the Atmel's. Um, the AVR freaks out there who will come to the defence and slag me off. Now, I don't normally uh, you know, care about people slagging me off, but I know they're going to do it. They're going to point out every technical, uh, not so much error, but they're going to point out, oh, you didn't do this, this isn't right, it's better in this respect, this one's better, and ah, oh, I'm not going to fall for it. So instead, I'm just going to give you my general opinion on PIC versus Atmel. Now let me give you the skinny right up front. I'll get to the bottom line of it straight away. Which should you choose if you're a beginner, PIC or AVR? Well, the answer is it doesn't bloody well matter. Why? Because it's, it, it really doesn't. They're both microcontrollers, they're both excellent, they're both some of the biggest on the market, they've both got excellent support, they've both got excellent beginner kits available, they've both got free development tools, they've both got this, and they, they, it's just, really, it doesn't matter. My advice to you is find a development kit, a starter kit, which suits your purposes, suits your needs. Some of them will have various features, either LCDs or motor controls or whatever on it. Um, pick one that you, that's within your price range that you like and, you know, buy it and go for it because it doesn't matter. Now, if you want to be a good engineer, if you want to be a top engineer, you will not be one of these rabid fanboys who religiously sticks to one particular microcontroller family. You will always keep your options open. And you can tell an absolute dickhead designer because they're so passionate about one particular um, part or one particular manufacturer and they'll just ignore all others, um, even to their own detriment. And really, you know, that might be okay for hobby use, but if you're a professional designer, if you're a professional design engineer, you've got to keep your options open. That's just the way it is. Now, I'm, um, I've, I've got to admit, I'm more of a fan of the uh, PICs than the Atmels, purely because um, I've been using them longer. I think their support is uh, better in many respects, um, and I like their tool set better than the um, Atmel ones, and I'll go into that. And, well, it, but there's not much in it. Now, I've used both PIC and Atmel, and I've used, you know, other brand microcontrollers as well, but PIC and Atmel are sort of the two biggies that you always hear about, and they're not necessarily the biggest on the market. But, you know, like you don't hear about Motorola at all, right? You hardly ever hear about Motorola, but they're like still, I, I believe, number one in the automotive market, or maybe even the white goods market as well, or something like that. But you don't hear about them, because they, they're not, they're just some, um, you know, industrial thing that companies just use because they've been using them for 20 years and that's what they use and they're happy to use it and they're great and they just work and you know they don't make the mainstream media they don't make the magazines they don't really have hobbyist 
level intro kits, or they don't do it as well as Pick and Atmel do. So that's why you never hear about other ones. You know, um, you know, Motorola and um, you know TI MSP 430s aren't uh, too bad. They've got a bit of um, you know in a bit of foothold in the beginner market as well. And but you know, Pick and Atmel are the two big ones. And really, if you're gonna, I think if you're gonna start out with a micro, you should be picking one of them just purely because of the support available, the beginner supports, the starter kits, the books, and things like that. Now when it comes to these fanboys, I think that um, Atmel AVR ones win hands down. They are, most, they are the most rabid, fierce defenders of their religion, which is Atmel, and they hate pick so much. It's laughable. Every, you know, if you go on a forum and ask which is the best, pick versus Atmel, a lot of the times the pick guys will say, oh, you know, pick's okay and I use it and that's okay, but you should consider the others. But the Atmel guys won't do that. No, you must use freaking Atmel. And yet, you know, they will just defend it until death. It's ridiculous. What a bunch of dickheads. Now, if you want to look at the choice of pick versus Atmel from a professional point of view, if I was... If I was, you know, starting a new company and they asked me, we well, had to pick a microcontroller to, you know, uh, to uh, make our new products with, which one you should you choose? Well, there's a whole range of factors which go into the decision, but as a first order, uh, you know, first order guess, approximation, I would tend towards pick microchip. Why? Because they're a, they're a bigger company, they're bigger, more stable, and I think they've got a better future. That's, they, they, they're just facts, really. I mean, Atmel, it's, um, as far as I'm aware, they have actually not made a profit from day one. Um, I, I could be wrong there, but I think it's, that's pretty darn close to the mark. And Atmel, are in, um, and most of the other uh, manufacturers, are um, most of the other microcontroller manufacturers, are in deep financial trouble. And uh, as you might know, uh, PIC actually tried to buy Atmel. They tried a hostile take takeover, which failed. Um, that was about six months ago or something, or something like that. And uh, really, it just didn't work. So there's going to be, but you haven't heard the end of that, uh, because there's going to be more consolidation in the microcontroller market, because uh, microchip are pretty much the standouts financially and and this future stability they they're doing pretty well and the others are really struggling so you're going to see a lot more mergers in the microcontroller market I think because as a professional designer often you've got to actually consider the longevity of the parts you're actually building in to your design not just this design but future designs and you know um, it's a quite a uh, common occurrence to actually try and get uh, written assurance from a manufacturer that the part you've chosen is going to be available, still available, in 10 years' time. And, and that can be pretty important. It's not going to matter a rat's ass for hobbyist use or, you know, designing, you know, small-scale projects. But when you're building parts into multi-million dollar bits of equipment or stuff like that, it's very important. So, for some advice, when you're looking to uh, get some development kits for your first microcontroller, PIC or Atmel, the others, are, the others are the same really, but I think PIC has an edge, I've mentioned it before, it's the PIC kit, right? The PIC kit 2 or the PIC kit 3, don't get put off by my bad remarks about the PIC kit 3, because that was in comparison to the PIC kit 2, it sucked. But um, on its own, it's still pretty good. And it's only 40 bucks, and it does in-circuit debugging and in-circuit programming. And it's the official um, uh, authorized by Microchip. Now, the Atmel one, you can get the a similar price, you know, $40 or something like that, $50 in-circuit serial programmer, JTAG programmer. But this one, I believe, doesn't, well, it doesn't do debugging. If you want to do debugging on the Atmels, you've got to pay a lot more for the in-circuit um, debugger emulator device. I'm not sure of the price of that, but I think it's in the hundreds of dollars. Now, when you're uh, looking at these sort of tools, I highly recommend you don't get these parallel programmers like the PickStart Plus. It, it, well, it might be okay if you're building something on a breadboard and you put your chip in and you program it and you move it over to your breadboard, but you know, uh, really, you want to do in-circuit debugging and you don't want to be plugging the chip every time you recompile the software because it's just a pain in the ass and it can ruin your chip and it's just slow and annoying. 
So same with the Atmel. I've got one of these STK 500s. I think it's one of the worst development starter kits I've ever used. It's crap. It's just so convoluted and confusing. And I can remember when I first, my first experience with Atmel's was using the AT Tiny 26 Micro. And um, it did it, it was supposed, this STK 500 was supposed to support the chip and it didn't, it didn't work. All the damn data sheets were wrong and I had to modify jumper cables and stuff like that to get the damn chip working and it's a pain in the ass. So don't get this and I, I really wouldn't recommend you pay money for this. For 40 bucks you can get one of these serial in circuit programmers. You can hook them straight up to your breadboard or wire your trick chip straight into your board and do in-circuit programming and debugging. It's great. Now, I'll give you a big tip here. Do not use any of these third-party or do-it-yourself programmers. These, you know, the build-it-yourself designs for $5. You can plug into your parallel port or something like that. They are complete and utter garbage. Do not buy them. Please, you'll regret it. Trust me, when you can buy the official manufacturer's programmer for 40 or 50 bucks, which has proper support for every part in the range, and you know, it, it, they just cannot be beat. It's not worth saving 30 bucks and having all that grief when, when your project just doesn't work and you've got to figure out, oh, is it, the, is it the software? Is it my hardware I've built? Is it the programmer I've built? Is it the, you know, is it the programming software? Does it support this? Does it support that? Ah, oh, give me a break. Buy the real programmer. Trust me. Now, when I started back in uh, with Pix very early on, you know, if if you bought the Pickstart programmer, which is I think the only one they had at the time, it was hundreds of dollars. Very expensive. The hobbyists couldn't afford it, so you were forced to use these low-cost do-it-yourself programmers. And I started out with um, the uh, newfound um, Warp. Three, I think it was at the time. This is the Warp 13 I upgraded to, but um, you know, it's it's done by a guy in Australia, and and it was it was the best um, third-party cheap programmer for Pix at the time. But I don't think you can buy this anymore. But there's still lots of these third-party programmers out there. Please do not touch them. I'll tell you a story about one of my first experiences with, in fact, my first experience with um, Atmel chips. It was the AT Tiny 26 as I've mentioned and it's um, I was uh, using the in-circuit, I soldered it onto my board and I used the in-circuit serial programmer. Great, right? Fantastic. And I was playing around with all the register settings and you know mucking around trying to experiment with it and figure out how it all works and all of a sudden it just stopped. It just didn't work anymore and I was scratching my head for ages trying to figure out is it my board? Has something failed? Have I blown my chip? Have I you know, is the software not working, or is the programmer blown, or, you know, well, I couldn't read the chip, I couldn't program it. Well, what it was is I accidentally programmed one of the fuse settings, uh, one of the, you know, the, the main fuse settings in the uh, AVR micro, which disabled the in-circuit programming port, and well, it permanently disables it. So that it means that you, the board you've soldered that chip on is useless. You've got to physically unsolder the chip and put it in a parallel programmer to reprogram it or solder it in a new chip from scratch. It's bullshit. It's a real trap for young players. Now, I know a lot of people, the fanboys, will come out and say, well, that's, uh, that's actually a feature because it's designed to secure the chip. Well, okay, fair enough. You can look at it both ways. It is a feature. But um, I, it's a real big trap for young players. You've got to watch out with, with the Atmels. The picks don't have such a problem. You use the in-circuit serial programmer, and if you blow the wrong fuse bits, it doesn't matter. You can erase the chip and start again. Not a problem. So watch out for it. Now, one of the big differences which the AVR fanboys like to trump with the Atmels is that they're four times faster than the equivalent 16 series pick. And, well... Technically, that might be true because the Atmel's execute things typically in one clock cycle, whereas the PICs typically take four clock cycles. Now, it's not always like that. The Atmel's don't always do it in one, so don't get carried away. But yes, the Atmel's are faster, higher millions of instructions per second when you compare them. But, you know, it's my argument to that is, well, who gives a shit, really? If you're 
actually, if you're designing some high speed, high processing application, why the hell are you pushing it to 16 or 30 MIPS or something on an 8-bit micro? Go and use a 16 or a 32-bit and you'll probably cut your power consumption for the same price. God, it's, you know, don't be um, sold by the fact that the Atmos faster. It's not the huge advantage which they claim it to be, I don't think. But you can argue until the cows come home, of course, but it's application specific. And then, of course, the differences aren't the same when you start talking about the, uh, the PIC 16-bit series and the PIC 32-bit series, you know? They are, they are excellent um, architectures that are quite fast and efficient. Um, the PIC 32 uses the MIPS 4000 series and the um, AVR, they don't do a 16-bit version, they only have a 32-bit version which uses the, their own proprietary 32-bit um, architecture, whereas the MIPS has the advantage there in the 32-bit one in that um, it uses standard MIPS 4000, so there's more development tools available technically. But Atmel also offer an ARM solution, the ARM, the 32-bit ARM 7 and ARM 9 stuff. So really, um, you know, if you're going 32-bit, it's, uh, you know, if you want to use ARM, go Atmel. If, you want to, if you're happy with the MIPS 4000, then go for the pick. But the good thing about the pick is that um, the MP Lab development environment and the tools, okay, this one $40 tool and the one MP Lab development environment will allow you to go seamlessly from a little six pin 8 bit pick all the way up to their pick 32s. It'll be a common interface, and that's one of the big advantages, I think, of the, um, of, of the microchip development system over Atmel, and that's not to be um, taken lightly, really, because that, that can be a huge advantage for a lot of people. One other advantage of the microchip is that um, you can get the online, you can buy them direct online, and you can have them pre-programmed as well directly from the factory, which is, which is a really cool feature, so something to consider. Now, when it comes down to architecture, I'm not going to go into the huge differences, but the Atmel fanboys will claim that the Atmel architecture is more efficient than the PIC. And, well, you'll get no argument from me, really. It is, okay? Um, it's, you know, it's, it's more efficient in, um, oh, in, in quite a few ways, okay? But um, that, doesn't mean, uh, that doesn't mean much at all. It might mean totally squat for your application. A lot of the people uh, will claim that the PIC 16 series does not work with C compilers. Well, that's absolute and utter bullshit. Because if you get a high quality C com compiler, like the high tech C compiler, which Microchip have just bought, I've, they're very efficient. They're brilliant compilers. And I've actually used C easily on the 16 bit um, uh, PIC micros with only one or two kilobytes of flash memory and, you know, 300 bytes of uh, SRAM, right? Really tiny memory footprints work fine with C. So don't give me that rubbish that it doesn't support C because the PICs do. You've just got to have a good compiler for it. And Microchip actually offer that compiler um, free. They Well, it's a um, the high-tech one for the 16 series is free and the one for the 18 series and the 30, uh, the 16-bit series picks and the 32-bit series picks, they're all free, but they're limited in code optimization. Now, on the Atmel side of things, they offer the uh, free GCC compiler, and there's a front end for it called WinAVR, I think it is. Now, when I last used that, it was the most atrocious piece of software I've ever seen. It was awful for a beginner. You had to be some you know, super computer science PhD script nerd just to get the thing to compile a Hello World program. It was ridiculous to set it up and get this GCC program working. You had to be the Linux bloody penguin, and it was hopeless. Now, I haven't used it for quite some time, so don't quote me on that. It could actually be much better these days, much easier to use, much simpler to install, and things like that. But a lot of these Atmel fanboys will claim that the, you know, it has this ACC, uh, GCC compiler and it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Don't necessarily believe them because I reckon the microchip one is really easy to install and really easy to use. So, you know, it's yeah, you've got to look at it from both sides of the fence. Give them both a try and see what you think.
Now, as far as feature sets go on the market, all the, all the peripherals which surround the actual CPU, well, you can compare those until the cows come home. But one thing you've got to consider is that uh, microchip have like five or six hundred, hundred different variations of PIC Micro. So you can choose exactly the one tailored to your particular niche application. And that can have some huge advantages. It can have some disadvantages too in terms of um, you know, supply and lead times and, and product viability in the future and things like that. But it's, it's good to have choice. Atmel can't even com come close to competing in terms of choice for the micros. But um, as a general rule, the Atmels might be more feature equipped for in a generic type device than the pick ones. But there's, there's nothing in it, really. So feature-wise, it's very hard to compare. Now, sometimes as a professional designer, I like to keep my options open for micros, as I've said. And sometimes I can, when I start a new project, it can take me weeks to uh, investigate and choose the, mice, the best microcontroller for the particular project I'm working on. Now, um, some companies don't give you that choice as a designer because they will, you'll be locked into some um, particular family or some particular part because that's the approved part, it's got an approved part number, it's got a purchasing schedule and uh, God knows what. But uh, if you do have the choice, then you, know, you can spend weeks investigating just the, mi just the right micro for the task. And I'll always keep an open mind when I start a project. So, you know, I'll go, I'll look at my requirements, the processing speed. Do I have to worry about uh, low power, ultra low power? Do I need DSP? Am I doing FFT stuff? Do I need a, you know, a, a differential amp in there? Do I need a voltage reference in there? Do I need a DAC output? Do I need this? Do I need an LCD interface? Et cetera, et cetera. And doing the research on that can just, it can take a long time. Now, um, you have to do that, or well, you should do that, in a professional application because it's worth it um, to get the right part for the job. But if you're just a hobbyist, you know, you just might go out and use the same part over and over again because it's some huge generic part and it does everything you need. Well, that's fine, but uh, just realize when you get more advanced and you get into professional design, you really need to keep your options open. And, you know, even though PIC have, say, you know, 500, 600 different parts, it doesn't mean I'm going to find a suitable part in there, in their entire range. Sometimes they don't. So I'm, I'm going to use, and I'll look at Atmel, or I'll look at TI, or I'll look at Motorola, or I'll look at somebody else, you know? That's just the way it is. Now, I've got to admit, because I've been using PIC for quite some time, when I start a new project, I'm probably going to err on the side of microchip as a first choice, but only because that's the micro I'm familiar with at that particular point in time. Sometimes I can go for a year or more without using PIX. I might use Atmel for a year. And uh, when I start a new project, I'm going to consider Atmel because that's the one that's familiar in my head at that particular time. Because I found that uh, if you don't keep up, if you don't keep your skills up, you can easily lose them um, when you move to a different micro. You can easily acquire them back fairly quickly. But, you know, you're going to err towards the side of the micro that you're familiar with. And, well, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. So who's going to win the big fist fight between PIC and AVR? Well, just like I said at the beginning, it doesn't matter a rat's ass. And if you argue over it, well, you're just a complete and utter dickhead and a bad engineer because you should keep your options open. So beginners, my advice is, it doesn't matter. Choose whichever one you think is going to suit your needs. And if you don't know, well, toss a damn coin. And no doubt I've pissed off the fanboys. I guarantee I have. So, fanboys, go for your damn life. Leave all the comments you want. Point out all the errors. Point out all, you know, why I'm wrong and why... I don't care. You're a dickhead and I'm going to ignore you.